let us uh, find the case let us solve the case for overdamped response this is the same circuit that we had been looking at till now we have a parallel RLC circuit with the initial current in the inductor I0 and the initial voltage across the capacitor is zero so only the inductor is energized All, uh, although the capacitor voltage can be taken to be some value other than zero like V0 but once we have done this you would be able to do this yourself so let us uh, move forward remember we discussed about three cases so if alpha is greater than mega naught then we get s1 and s2 to be real values but distinct different values and if alpha is less than omega naught or omega zero then we get this term to be zero and so s1 and s2 are both minus alpha and this is the general response and if alpha is equal to uh, omega naught sorry 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 when uh, alpha is less than omega zero we get this to be an imaginary term and s1 and s2 become complex numbers so complex conjugates because the real part would be equal only the imaginary part would be with a positive sign in one term and negative sign in the other term so s1 and s2 would be complex conjugates if alpha is equal to omega naught then we get s1 and s2 equal and the response is known as critically damped so the first one is the over damped response where alpha is greater than omega naught or alpha square is greater than omega naught square is the same thing for example uh, if if we take values say r is equal to 6 ohms l is an inductor of 7 henry and c is a capacitor of 1 over 42 farad capacitance large values but just to um, make you understand for a practical example as well so alpha would be equal to 1 over 2 rc if we compute this 1 over 2 into 6 into 1 over 42 we can solve it and see that alpha is equal to 3.5 alpha is the damping coefficient or the napper frequency often the units are referred to as napper per second so napper per second and omega naught would be equal to 1 over under root lc that would be 1 over 7 into 1 over 42 square root we are going to get roughly under root 6 as the omega naught which is under root 6 radian per second so we can clearly see that alpha is greater than omega naught because the square of this would be greater than 9 the square of this would be 6 so this is a case of uh, a damped response so what will be s1 and s2 so we can find s1 to be equal to minus 3.5 plus square root 3.5 square minus 6 and s2 to be minus 3.5 minus square root 3.5 square minus 6 so we can solve this to see that we get a minus 6 here and we can solve this to see if we get a minus 1 here again the dimensions are per second here because these are complex frequencies and so the voltage would be equal to a1 e raised to the power minus 1t and plus a2 e raised power minus 60 this is the response here what remains behind is to find a1 and a2 now try to understand how do we find a1 and a2 so this is the equation that we are dealing with which has for this particular example we can we can do it in general terms or we can take this example forward and try to see how to find a1 and a2 but let me stick to the general case because you can always apply it yourself and find it so 
this is the equation we have found what is s1 and we have found what is s2 and the question that remains is what will be a1 and a2 so you see uh, v is a function of time so given a time if we know the value of v because we know s1 and for a particular time the same time we put time here time here s1 here s2 here and the value that we know for a particular time if we put that here we are going to get an equation uh, uh, the relation between a1 and a2 one equation but because these are two variables we need another equation so if we know the voltage at two different times we can get two simultaneous equations and solving them is going to give us a1 and a2 but the problem is we only have one time uh, one voltage value at a particular time and that is v0 plus is 0 so if we put t is equal to 0 t is equal to 0 plus is for all practical purposes 0 so if we put this v at 0 plus or 0 just to differentiate that this is happening after switching or after t is equal to 0 we put 0 plus because in such circuits you know that before switching and after switching the circuits may be different so we, we are going to get a1 e raised power s1 into 0 plus which will be 0 plus a2 into e raised power s2 into 0 so what do we get here e raised power 0 e raised power 0 is 1 so we get a1 plus a2 and the voltage at t is equal to 0 is 0 so we get one equation so from this we know that a1 is the negative of a2 or a2 is the negative of a1 but this is one equation well, now we need another equation unfortunately we do not know the voltage um, at any other time so what we are left with luckily there is a very simple way out let us take the derivative of this equation the solution if we take its derivative we are going to get the derivative of v and then a1 s1 e raised power s1 t plus a2 s2 e raised power s2 t and if somehow for this equation for the derivative of voltage at t is equal to 0 is known somehow suppose dv at 0 plus by dt is known somehow then if we put t is equal to 0 in this equation we would be able to get the derivative of v at 0 plus the value here and what would we get here this term would become 1 this one would become 1 and we are going to get a1 s1 plus a2 s2 now this is going to give us the second equation and with two equations because s1 and s2 are known so knowing this we are going to get two equations and we can easily solve for a1 and a2 now what is this thing dv by dt we are not given the initial conditions at any other time except zero and we 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 got i zero and v zero the inductor current at zero and the voltage in the uh, capacitor voltage at zero but not the capacitor the derivative of the capacitor's voltage at equal to zero we do not know this can we find this what is this let us try to resolve this uh, in the first case in the first place what is dv by dt is there any expression you can think of that involves dv by dt yes luckily if we multiply this by c we get the capacitor current so the capacitor current divided by its capacitance is dv by dt so when we say dv by dt at zero plus we mean the capacitor current at zero plus over c but we do not know anything about capacitor current at uh, zero plus but if if we merely look at the circuit at t is equal to zero plus just the initial time instant when the circuit started we 
have a circuit where the conductor is behaving as a current source the capacitor is behaving as a voltage source that is in this particular case is shorted out but let me draw the general case because capacitor resists sudden change in voltage so whatever this voltage would be would be for this instant the same as the uh, voltage on the capacitor so this is a current source of current i not at that time only obviously it's going to change with time and this voltage zero volt is going to be a voltage and we have this r now this voltage of zero volt is across this as well as this so what will be this current let us let us say that the this capacitor current is the downward current because of passive sign convention at zero plus now we know this current is upward is i at zero plus let us take this current downward according to the passive sign convention i r at zero plus now you can very easily see at this time instant v the voltage across the resistor is uh, zero so i r zero plus would be would have been voltage at zero plus over r which in this case is zero so we get zero this current this current is zero this current we know i l zero plus is i naught and i c zero plus can be computed to be so if we apply kcl here then the outward currents the sum of outward outward currents equal to sum of inward currents so i r at zero plus plus these are the outward currents and this is the inward current would be equal to this and this is zero so i c at zero plus is i at zero plus which is i naught so what do we get here so dv by dt at t is equal to zero is i naught over c and we know the value of both so this equation means i naught over c is equal to a1 s1 plus a2 s2 equal to zero now with these two equations knowing uh, uh, not knowing a1 and a2 and knowing i naught and c and s1 and s2 we have two equations and two variables and we can solve them simultaneously to get a1 and a2 for example for this particular example if we, if we solve them we are going to get a1 plus a2 equal to 0 and i naught is let us take a, a value for i naught as well let me see if the book has taken any particular value for this case the initial current this is article 9.2 the initial inductor current has been taken to be 10 ampere so if we solve these two equations now 10 over 1 over 42 is equal to a1 into minus 1 plus a2 into minus 6 we are going to get this equation a1 sorry um, 6a2 plus a1 is equal to minus 420 so solving this equation and this equation together we got a1 equal to 84 a2 equal to 84 uh, minus 84 and the overall response would be vt is equal to 84 e raised power minus t minus 84 e raised power minus 60 volts this is the 
expression for the voltage across any of the components and this is an over damped response we will come to this later so what is the difference between uh, the response being over damped or under damped or critically damped but this is how it is going to look you can see that it is basically a sum of two exponents two decaying exponents for the difference and uh, higher the uh, the coefficient of t here in the exponent is uh, the the larger would be the rate of decay so this term is going to decay out earlier and this term is going to stay out stay longer and we know from our uh, our knowledge of rr and rc circuits that we used to encounter terms like e raised power minus t over tau so whatever we have here is basically 1 over tau so for this term the tau term is 1 second and here the tau is 1 over 6 second so it's a smaller tau here so five time constants here would be less than one and five time constants here would roughly be five so we expect that that this term is going to stay for around five seconds and this term is going to go out in around one second so this response this term is going to go out so we expect that this transient both of them are transient parts because the energy is ultimately going to go out and we understand that uh, the settling time we will compute this in the next video the settling time ts is the time when the output or the response becomes steady is is basically defined as the time the output attains less than one percent of its of its max value so the settling time we will compute the settling time and we will see that it is going to be of the order of five seconds or so.